Welcome back, my statisticians. This is Professor Sampson from PSI Love Math. Now I have a statistical banger. This is actually part two of estimating population means when sigma is known. You already had a definition, you already ready to go, so we're going to jump right into some problems. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So our first problem here is number 21 in my book. We're going to go through it how I I want to do it. And most of your instructors on YouTube or in your class will want you to do most of this this way. I usually read the question, um, the numbers in it, and you should assign numbers right away to letters. So I'm going to model this exactly like I would expect anyone in my class to do. A survey of 97 randomly selected homework owners, owners that's N equals 97, found that the mean, the mean amount spent on lawn services was 720 per year. So they found that the mean, the mean amount of people is 720. So the mean of this sample is 720. Construct and interpret a 98% confidence interval. So I put CI is equal to 98% for the mean amount of money spent on lawn services per household. Assume that the population standard deviation is $123. A couple of things, we should already know what we're gonna round our final answer to because we're given X bar. So we can't round any more, we can't be more precise than what's listed. So we need to find a confidence interval. Right away, you look up, you can look on your formula sheet, but your confidence interval formula is X bar minus E. And E is what? What's E? Now we should say X bar minus E is less than mu is less than x bar plus e, just for reference for this first problem. And e is equal to z alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n. Let's get it. So we have our x bar. So we could say, yeah, 720 minus e is less than mu is less than 720 plus e for whatever we get with e. Now I'm going to work on e. thing we need for e right away is z alpha over 2. So how do we find alpha? Remember, alpha was what? We recall, put it down here, recall, alpha is 1 minus C. Alpha is equal to 1 minus C is 98%. Remember, we changed that to 0 0.98, 0 0.98. So alpha is equal to 1 minus 0.98, which you should know is 0 0.02. But we're not looking for alpha here. We're looking for alpha over 2. So alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.02 divided by 2. That's going to be 0 0.01. So now you're looking for Z of 0.01. So we're going to find that in our chart. We're going to look at our chart and find z of 0.01. Now we need to know that 0.01 is area to the right. This z alpha over 2 is area to the right. If we didn't discuss that, z alpha over 2 is area to the right when you go back in. So if you wanted to read off your chart, you have two choices. It doesn't matter because these things are what? They are symmetric. So 0 0.01 and 1 minus 0 0.01 is 0.99. They're both going to read the same thing. So let's pull up our chart. Let's scroll. We're looking for 0 0.01. Remember, we're looking for a z-score. So that's area. That alpha over 2 is area. And the two closest numbers are 0 0.0099 and 0 0.0122. Obviously, it's close to the 0 0.99, negative 2.33. Remember, because they're symmetric, it won't matter. If you look up 1 minus 0 0.01, you're going to get 0.99. And if you look up 0.99 in your chart, you're going to get positive 2.33. You're never going to use the negative in writing your formula. So you're going to use 2.33, why? You should be using it because you were supposed to do one minus that and you would have gotten positive 2.33. So either way, you need to know to use 2.33 because that's what you would have read off the chart had you done it properly. At this point, you have to show me what your error is to six decimal places. So let's switch over to the calculator. 2.33 times 123 divided by the square root of 90. 
29.098806 because you have to round the last one up. So this is the correct answer for your margin of error. You must get your margin of error. Show me the margin of error. You get credit for your margin of error. You get credit for your proper Z alpha over two, your proper formula and rounding your margin of error to the right numbers. Also getting the appropriate Z, which should be plus 233, right? 2.33. So getting everything in line. So now at this point, you're going to get your answer using the calculator. So you're going to get your final answer in the calculator. After you show me that you know how to calculate E appropriately to get your interval, we can use calculator shortcut. For the calculator shortcut for this, you're going to go into stat. You're going to go over to test. And this is a Z interval test. Remember, we use a Z chart with a Z score and we're getting a Z interval. We're getting an interval from what to what. So that's number seven. So either hit number seven or scroll down to number seven. Once you hit that, you need to decide, did you use data or did you use statistics? Well, we didn't use data. We don't have anything in L1 and L2, but we were given all of the statistics. So we're going to hit enter on statistics and then we're going to put in our numbers. And our level of confidence was 98%. Make sure you turn that into 0.98 and then you hit enter. You see what you get on the calculator. You get 690.95 and you get 749.05. Okay, so now we can write our final answer. It's good enough for you to leave E here because you figured out E over here. So you can leave E where it is. You don't need to write anything. So your calculator gave you something. Remember, you need to round this back to your original number that was given to you. Even though they gave you 690.95, your confidence interval is going to be 691 is less than mu is less than and the other number was 749.0 so that's just going to be 749. This is your confidence interval. They're going to ask you to interpret. So the interpretation is that I am 98% confident and what are you talking about? What are you confident of? I am 98% confident that the mean amount of money spent on lawn care each year is between between $691 and $749. This is a complete problem. You have all the parts in it. It's worth about seven points in my class because you have to find the margin of error, make sure you use the proper formula and round it properly. Make sure you get the Z that you're supposed to get. Make sure you get alpha over two and then you interpret. Let's do one more. Oh, hell no. A physical therapist is investigating the mean recovery time after ACL surgery for patients involved in a new therapy regimen. A successful recovery was defined to be the ability to walk without crutches. None of that means anything to us. Many of you get caught up on the word. For 38 randomly selected patients, N equals 38, the mean recovery time after that, all right, the mean recovery time for what? For those randomly selected patients. That's why it's a sample. It's the sample of 38 which gives them a sample mean of 22.6. Assume that the population standard deviation is given to us right now is 3.7 days. Find and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the mean minus E is less than mu is less than X bar plus E. We know what our X bar is, 22.6 minus E, and then that's 22.6 plus. E. Now we need to find our margin of error, which is Z alpha over two times sigma over the square root of n. I know that's 0.01, right? Because it's 1 minus 0.99. And then I know that I'm looking for z of 0.01 divided by 2, which is 0.005. So right now you need to go on your chart. And those of you who don't know how to not use a negative, remember z alpha over 2, it might be a question, is area to the right. You need to look up 1 minus 0.005. Or again, you can remember that you need to use the positive side. 0.995. So it doesn't matter whether you look up this or this, you're going to get the negative and positive. But remember, your Z of 0.005 is a positive number. So we're on our chart again, and we're looking up either 0.995 or 0.005. So you have exactly one unit away from 2.57 and 2.58. One unit away from both of those, 2.57 and 2.58. So in this case, this is the only case where your Z 
will be three digits. The only case where your Z will be di three digits. So we have 2.57 and 2.58 plus 2.58 equals divided by two. And that's going to give you 2.575. So we have that. Now we have our E is equal to 2.575 times sigma, which we said was 3.7 all over the square root of 38. So it looks like it came out to 1.5. 1.54556495 and I had to round that up to a 5. So now I can go on my calculator and pop in all my numbers. All right, remember where do we go? We go to stat, we go to calc, we go to test, we go down to z interval. We're using stat, so we're going to put in sigma. Our sigma was 3.7. We're going to put in x bar which was 22.6 days. We're going to put in n which this time was 38 and then our confidence level was 99. We're going to put in 0.99. And then we're going to get our answer 21.054 comma 24.146. So that should have been what your calculator gave you. So now you need to make sure that you put it in the right form, meaning you have the right number of decimal places showing in your final answer. Now you see that X bar is one decimal place. So we need to have our answer is 21.1 is less than mu is less than 24.1. Interpret, construct the confidence interval, and then interpret. So the interpretation of this, the physical therapist, because we're talking about the physical therapist is not you, can be what 99% confident that the mean recovery time for patients using the new therapy after ACL surgery is between 21.1 and 24.1 days. So the last last problem that I'm going to show you oh my God. is how to find the sample size. This one says, suppose you are interested in determining the mean number of hours students spend working out each week. And you want to be, you want a 95% confidence interval and a maximum error of 0.5 hours. So you're saying what you want your maximum error to be. Assuming your standard deviation is 2.5 hours, what is the minimum number of students you must include in your sample? So now you're looking for n. n is equal to z alpha over 2 times sigma all over e squared. Uh, confidence level is 95% or 0.95, however you choose to write it. Your maximum error, which is e, is equal to 0.5 hours. And your standard deviation is 2.5. Alpha is 1 minus 0.95, and that's going to be 0 0.05. So z 0 0.05 over 2. So you're looking for what? We're looking for alpha of 0.02. Five. Here we was looking for 0 0.025. 0 0.025 is negative 1.96, or actually positive 1.96. Z alpha over 2, which is 1.96. That's times sigma, which is 2.5, all over E, which is 0.5 squared. So you need to write down exactly what you get when you do that. So write down the number that you get, and then you can round it. You can use whatever method you like to put in your calculator. But remember, when you're dividing time, tops by bottoms. You have to put the top in a full set of its own parentheses in order for it to work. I might use fractions here, but you can do whatever you like, but make sure that you can get it in properly. And remember, you have to square it. So you would have to do double parentheses. So make sure you practice this. I'm actually going to take the shortcut to make the video not longer. 1.96 times, it was 2.5, and then that was divided by 0.5, and then I need to square that whole thing. So what we got from the original answer was 96.04. But remember, you can't get 96.04 students. So n is going to equal to 97, not 96. 97. Why 97? Because regardless of what's back here, you have to go up to the next number so that you can include enough students. If you say 96, you didn't include all of your students. So you have to go up to 97. So that answer is 97. So that takes care of all that we have done done in that section when we were finding a confidence interval when we knew the sigma the sigma was known and the sigma will always be known in our next video we'll talk about what do we do when sigma is not known we use a whole different chart i hope that you have found this found helpful and don't forget to like comment and subscribe professor samson from peace and i love math and i'm out of here